America's last affordable housing is under threat. Let's take a look. I don't want to live in a trailer park, but that's all I can afford at the moment. I don't want to say I'm ashamed of it, but kind of. I mean, I have a roof over my head, I have a warm bed, I have a warm shower, and there have been times where I, where I don't have that. Daisy Gomez is a single mom. During the pandemic, she and her daughter moved into a mobile home park called Trails End, just a few doors down from her parents. The abuelita! The abuelita! Where are you? I have 11 years living here. La otra vez sí es mía. Yo no estoy rentando aquí. Esa es mía, propia. Yo esto, lo que yo tengo he podido sembrar, plantar, todo. Y yo poco a poco lo voy acomodando. Like most cities in the U.S., Fresno rents are soaring. In just a year, the price of a one-bedroom apartment went up 28%, the highest increase in the country. Trails End has been an affordable haven for years. But that could be coming to an end. A new corporate landlord with a history of steep rent increases has made a cash offer to buy the park. Where would you go if you couldn't afford the rent here? Pues subir lo poquito que me quepa en la, en la camioneta y en el carro. Pues, <laughs> durmiendo en el freeway. What this person is talking about, you often don't get to see a direct action reaction but it's exactly the same reason why there are so many homeless people on the streets of Los Angeles and in many urban population dense areas all around this country. Okay. It is the cost of living skyrocketing. It is greedy landlords and landowners selling out to corporate, uh, corporate real estate, uh, companies or, or hedge funds or, you know, um, property management companies, hedge funds that own property management companies that go in, okay, and buy out the entire fucking market and and drive up the prices with no affordable alternatives readily available, which, you know, in all of that scarcity uh, creates homeless people. That's it. That's the main reason why there's so many homeless people. It's not the drugs. It's nothing but the fact that homes are incredibly fucking expensive. It is virtually impossible to find affordable shelter. Okay? At Trail's End, the sale was triggered by a tragedy. A Fresno family without a loved one after a two-trailer fire claimed the life of a person on Thursday night as fire crews battled the blaze at the Trails End Mobile Home Park. It's been operating without a permit for months after the state suspended it indefinitely due to unsanitary conditions. Last April, a generator sparked a fire that killed one person. The park's owners, a family who residents say had been negligent for years, lost their right to collect rent. Then a California civil court took over and appointed a temporary custodian called a receiver. Now, construction crews roam the park, tearing down unpermitted structures and bringing others up to code. Tungaloon 2000, thank you for the 20th of This is night and day from the last time I was here. Night and day. Mark Adams is the president of the California Receivership Group. And his job isn't just cleanup. As the receiver, he'll play a large role in the final sale, vetting all offers and recommending a buyer to the judge. This is why live there if it's so unsafe, brother. What do you mean? The if the alternative is living on the fucking street or living in your car, and then ultimately living on the street because you know you can't really live in your car uh, for a very long time without getting into trouble then what do you mean? Where should they live? I mean, he just basically said, I have nowhere else to live. Ugly to beauty? What? This is all from the original fire, which you can see the, the conditions that 
existed here. Well, before we got here, nobody really nobody was in control. It was kind of a you know Lord of the Flies type of situation. Adam's group also sent out violation notices to residents, telling them to remove things like flower pots and wind chimes. Or they're literally gentrifying a fucking trailer park in Fresno, dude. Jesus Christ. And if residents break these rules, Adams has the power to ask a judge to evict them. You have to have a leash on these dogs. My dog don't walk with a leash. Well, they're gonna get taken away. Yeah, they're gonna get took. Why do you think that you're uh, uh, not required to obey the rules? My dog have to have a leash when he listens to me and he stays right by me. Dogs out of your yard have to be on leash. But that's the problem, the attitude of that. It's just like, why does she think that she doesn't have to obey the rules? Yeah. That was what was going on at this park. And in the past, there were bigger, more aggressive dogs. I agree. Also... But don't you understand if, if like nobody has told them that this is the rule up until you came in and started saying this is a rule, that's hard for people. I, yes, I do understand that. And what I don't understand is she knows exactly who I am. And I just told her to put her dogs on leash and she told me, in effect, F you. That's what I object to. So that's why we're getting rid of them, because they don't belong here. I'm not anti-resident by any means. That's why I'm doing the work that I do. Yeah, no, he's not. But also, like, they're just simply not following the rules, you know? So they should die. Um, they should become homeless. They're literally one step above homeless, currently. Like, literally living in a fucking handmade trailer park. Um, but you know, also, uh, they're not following the rules, so they should be homeless and die. But a woman like that, that's like saying to a cop, because basically- but you're not a cop though. Well, I'm a court agent and the court has directed me to- Oh my God, this dude thinks he's deputized. Like he's literally like, he wants, he wants to be a cop. Enforce the laws on this park. Adams brought in private security guards after his construction workers had several tense interactions with residents. The park was a- Yep, private security moves in. Dude, dystopia happening right in front of your eyes. Now, I'm gonna do the same thing that the Donald Trump supporters do when talking about Donald Trump. Dude, if you fucking link me this one more goddamn time, I'm gonna blast you into fucking space, okay? Chat needs to work out. All that matters in this broken world. You literally kept fucking spamming this shit. I don't know what it is. Stop spamming it, dude. It's, it's literally just Hezbollah. Oh my God, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to lose my fucking mind. This guy's been spamming this, Evacon, spamming this since fucking 248. It's been hours. I didn't click on it on purpose. Stop spamming. Anyway, I'm going to pull a fucking, if it can happen to Trump, it can happen to you. But this time, the reverse of that, which is more realistic. What's happening here with private security moving in, private security moving in and, and uh, forcibly evicting people out of their homes that a court has given the authority to some fucking landlord piece of shit. That's happening in trailer parks. That is the testing ground. What, what people are conducting in the third world, the actions that they engage in in the third world inevitably come to the first world. The American uh, military used um, the, the long-range acoustic devices, the LRADs, originally as a riot suppression mechanism in Iraq, and then they moved that technology into America, and it came to your fucking backyard. Okay? Same with the microwave gun that zaps the, the waterfall... The, the, water particles under your skin, okay? They use it as a military use on the third world. They test it out on people who can't fight back, on people who can't say anything, and then they use it on you. Same with this. They come in, slumlords come in, eviscerate the fucking population, laser them, force them into homelessness, even in one of the poorest neighborhoods, and then they build new houses for somewhat wealthier even that, but even then, still very much poor people, okay? That alignment will ultimately come to you as well. And what you don't know or what you don't realize is that this 
is going to this is already happening in some ways uh to middle class people that's why there's so much uh, there's so much issue with uh, a lack of affordable housing in so many fucking neighborhoods that's why your rent keeps going up and you have no you have no way to fight back against it you have no mechanism of control over your own life yeah they surely haven't uh, uh sent in private security yet to evict you but that's coming for you too if they do it here they're gonna do it to you as well like a hot ass mess there was a lot of homeless people, there was a lot of drug use, there was sewer water in the street. The receivership has been cleaning up, which we definitely appreciate, but they have brought in armed guards and have been intimidating the residents. They're not here for us, they're not here to keep us safe. They're here for the construction people. So mobile home parks are one of the last avenues for affordable housing, for home ownership for people that are low income. And the greatest threat to them is um, corporate acquisition. Mariah Thompson is an attorney representing a group of Trails End residents as the receiver and courts decide the park's future. Why is the market so hot right now for mobile home parks? It's a very unique situation. The people own their why is the market hot for mobile homeowners? America is a dystopia. Like the American dream went from, you know, having single, uh, single family housing in a white picket fence in a nice neighborhood in a suburb, okay? Which, you know, you can have a disagreement with. I agree with you on that. I think that like, uh, you know, European countries with like high population density have done a way better job of like mixed income housing, okay? That's besides the point, though. Literally, we went from we went from white picket fence, single family housing, home ownership in a suburb, to the American dream turning into you can have a house in a trailer park. It's the hottest thing. Perhaps they put money into investing on improving that house, sometimes for generations, but they don't own the land. They rent the land, and they rent, pay a space rent every month. Moving a mobile home can cost thousands of dollars, so tenants often have no choice but to accept rent increases. Because folks are so invested in not losing their home, you can extract a lot of money out of them because they will go to incredible lengths to be able to pay the rent. One of the big players in mobile home investing is circling Trails End. A company called Harmony Communities has made a cash bid of $1.7 million for the 60-unit park. Harmony owns and manages 33 communities in three different states. Oh my god, dude. Slumlords. Holy shit, corporate slumlords. Jesus Across the country, fuck. parks like Trails End are transitioning from family ownership to large corporate ownership. 23% of purchases over two years were made by large companies, nearly twice as many as the previous period. Harmony's business model is to... Okay. As it becomes harder and harder to fucking eke out profits, to squeeze profits in every viable avenue, slowly but surely look for better uh, profit margins and better returns on your investment in a poorer population. Why? Because you can kill the poor. You can move the poor. You can do whatever the fuck you want to the poor. The court system will not defend the poor. So now, now they're looking for higher profit margins by, you know, doing this shit. Ownership over at, at, a, at a lower price point with a lower fucking uh, upfront capital. You can own a slum. You can become a slum lord. Uh, you can become a slum lord in a fucking trailer park. To identify parks that are usually in not the best condition. Um, and to acquire them. So they'll come in and they'll buy these older communities, um, which provide affordable housing for very low income folks. They immediately increase rent. As soon as you increase the rent, it increases the value of the park because you can kind of say that the park income is now X amount higher, park is worth more money. They state that they're going to use the increase in rent to make investments into the community that are going to make everybody proud to live in the community um, and will benefit everyone moving forward. So they're basically gentrifying mobile home parks. That's a great way to put it. 
Harmony likes to market itself as affordable housing. And the question, of course, is affordable. Yeah, like I said, because these are poor people, you can move faster because they have no way of, of uh, like, not even on accident, they're going to get, like, a fucking lawyer to defend them, right? Um, if you did this, in, in, when you're doing gentrification in, like, a, like a lower-middle-class neighborhood, um, you have to do it slowly but surely. You can't just, like, fucking literally go in and, and rip their lives apart. Um, some of them might be able to fight back. But poor people have no way to fight back. They are already fighting every fucking day of their lives to survive. Which is why you are able to see a perfect example of how gentrification ruins people's lives and also contributes to homelessness literally right in front of your eyes. It's happening over the course of like a few years rather than maybe a decade. Rather than five years, it's happening over the course of one year. Affordable for who? Affordable Learning for the people that were there thing. when Dude, you bought the Dude, that's a really park, good one, man. That's or affordable really good... for the, the kind of people you'd rather have living in your park um, who are of a higher income bracket. Harmony's already been active in the area. In 2019, they bought a park called Shady Lakes, just south of Fresno. It's a community largely made up of farm workers from Mexico. What happened after Harmony took over this park? Uh, lo que hizo esta nueva compañía es de que <clears throat> inmediatamente nos aumentó la renta. 395 era antes. Income bracket. Harmony's already been active in the area. In 2019, they bought a park called Shady Lakes, just south of Fresno. It's a community largely made up of farm workers from Mexico. What happened after Harmony took over? Oh, that's the other part. Yeah, I was going to say, a lot of these dudes are, are uh, working in the agricultural industry, too. So they're getting fucked over by their bosses every goddamn day, too. They're working in insane conditions. They're not getting paid enough. They have no adequate way to unionize and, and to actually uh, earn uh, a higher percentage of the profits that they're generating. They are fundamentally important for uh, not only just the U.S. economy, uh, our agricultural production. They're important for uh, they're important for America on a on a national security basis. Like without food, you have insane disruptions. You would have insane volatility. And these guys are basically indentured servants working in that system, and they are very very replaceable. Why? Because you fucking fire them if they fight back, and then you bring in a new. A crop of of fresh indentured servants over the border. This is something that they do. Um, this is something that they do uh, within uh, the the uh, you know Purdue uh, chicken factories as well. I've talked about this many many times over. Um, and of course they still pay taxes. Don't don't misunderstand me. Over this part. Uh, lo que hizo esta nueva compañía es de que <clears throat> inmediatamente nos aumentó la renta. 395 era antes y ahorita son uh, ya cerca de los 700 dólares. Entonces, uh, cada vez él va buscando a ver por dónde sacar más dinero. In addition to raising the base rent, Harmony has started charging separately for water and trash services, which used to be included. Now, some residents are paying more than double what they did just three years ago. Yep. En ocasiones han venido y han tomado fotografías de de acá adentro, afuera, y luego ya nos mandan una nota. Tienes que limpiar o tienes que hacer esto, si no, te damos 60 días para que te echemos. 700 for this? Brother, sister, we're talking California, even fucking Fresno, dude. What do you mean? 700 for this? Yeah, guess what? California pricing, motherfucker. What are you talking about? Yeah, $700 uh, is, is pretty, pretty fucking good. Like, they, they have, the reason why I say that is because, like, obviously it's awful, and you probably get a lot more amenities for $700 in, like, whatever, uh, you know, Ohio suburb you live in. Or maybe, I don't even think you can get $700 in Ohio. Like, we're talking really, really poor parts. Uh, you'd have to still... Yeah, I know it's just for the land and not the trailer. Just listen. My point is... <sighs> they have no other alternative. They have nowhere to go. 700 is good. 
That's what they're 700 for a parking spot so you can put your trailer on top of it is good for them better than any other place. Del parqueadero. How can you afford to stay here? Lógicamente que yo escogí escojo pagar primero lo más importante que viene siendo la renta, el agua, la luz y se supone que el teléfono también. Ya lo demás pues a veces hay para comer, a veces no hay para comer. We reached out to Harmony multiple times for an interview, but they declined to speak. Everyone's shitting on Fresno Central Valley like they don't feed the whole fucking world and they're human fucking beings, goddamn. No, that's the point. That's what I'm saying. These guys have a profoundly important role, dude. Like, without them, America is fucked, okay? These dudes are picking every vegetable. Do you understand? They are the backbone of the agricultural production in this country. Speak to us on camera and didn't answer our written questions. In a previous statement about Shady Lakes, they said rent increases are necessary to improve infrastructure in the park and maintain that their rents are among the most affordable in the country. Unlike the rural area where Shady Lakes is located, the city of Fresno actually has a rent control ordinance for mobile home parks. But Harmony has sued to overturn similar restrictions. Why are you recommending that Harmony buy Trails End Park? Yeah. They showed up, and they're a credible operator. My job is to, is to find the best of the available buyers. This company, Harmony, has a reputation, though, for increasing rents dramatically in properties that they take over. Yes. Are you worried about that happening here? No, and I'll tell you why. The city of Fresno has a rent control ordinance, and, uh, and so there's no way for Harmony to circumvent the rent control ordinance. The law is the law. But Harmony has a history of suing cities over these rent control ordinances. And I know the argument, and I agree. So I called the principal of Harmony and said, I'm being told that you're going to file a lawsuit against it. But he committed to me that he is going to abide by the rent control ordinance and has no intention to file a lawsuit against it. And so that's the kind of you know, red herring and fear mongering that I've been dealing with on this. But you've seen, dude, this guy's such a victim. I bet this guy goes on like uh, uh, the the. I bet this guy believes in the the landlord's rights movement. You know what I mean? He he's giving me real fucking redditor vibes. It's also funny because like every fucking neoliberal on Reddit is like they larp as this guy. You know what I mean? Even though they are living in some fucking, uh, living in some you know nice uh, Connecticut uh, basement that their parents own. They all behave like they are this guy, like they're a slumlord. Uh, it's called Pop, a person of property, sir. Seen what Harmony has done in other communities, right? I know of the Fresno County situation and some issue in Colorado. In El Monte, they sued the city over rent control ordinance. In Colorado, they raised the rent 50%. Given all this, what makes you think that they're a good faith actor for the residents? You know, uh, what happens there is not relevant, as far as I'm concerned, to a city that has a binding, enforceable rent control. But you're evaluating them as a company to take over this park. Yeah. Do those things not concern you? I'm not a... Uh... No, the answer is no. It doesn't, because he wants money. He doesn't give a fuck. He probably despises those people, dude. I mean, we not even probably. We know he fucking despises those people. Look at the way he was talking to the fucking whole ass human being in front of him. No, he's just like, no, I don't give a fuck. Like, I, I don't care. Like, they're poor. They deserve to suffer. A, a, a person to judge moral character. I'm a person to judge uh, the predictability of what somebody's going to do. And if they're bound by the law, whatever may or may not have happened elsewhere, is not relevant to me because they're going to have to obey this law. Harmony isn't the only buyer. For the record, people can only cowardly hide behind the rule of law over and over again, over and over again, when the law suits the wealthy. The only reason why these people can, uh, you know, posture behind the law and hide behind the law and say, well, I'm not making moral assertions here. I mean, this is not a moral judgment. We're just following the rule of the law. Well, yeah, because the rule of the law is, is on your side. They wrote the law to, to protect you. And this is what people like myself fucking advocate against, for the record. That's it.
The entire system is designed so he can get away with this shit. We're trying to take over Trails End. My clients have put forward a request that the park be sold to a nonprofit called Caritas, who has decades of experience operating affordable mobile home park communities, including two here in Fresno. But in order to put together a bid, Caritas needs financial documents from the owners of Trails End, and they haven't turned those over. Of course, dude. And it's not even, and here, here you have the truth. One, it's less dollars, okay? Not gonna be the same level. Two, he might even actually serve those fucking documents over to them to get both companies into a fucking bidding war to rise up the price of the trailer park, okay? And lastly, he would much rather give it off to a private corporation for some other reason, because maybe they're gonna, he's gonna sell a bunch of other properties down the line to the other corporation, okay? And lastly, he might just sell it to the private corporation because he's like, yeah, no, they're gonna treat these people the way that they deserve to be treated by fucking kicking them out, okay? That's it. That's, that's what's going on here. You know this motherfucker's not gonna sell it to the fucking nonprofit. What are you, crazy? It's capitalism, baby. Capitalism. Sometimes you wanna fuck over poor people and hurt them. And you're not going to be able to do that personally because then you might actually uh, get in trouble with the law. So you can do that by just fucking, uh, you know, letting another private corporation come in and just like do a sweep. Why do, Why are Turkish people constantly saying, come on, son, I don't know what I'm saying. Turkish people keep saying uh, they can't see me and I need to turn on my cam. I don't know why. Is it because it's the top of the hour and there's a 60 second ad break and they can't see me because they're seeing the fucking. Is that like a new Turkish meme? Hey, can you turn on the cam, please? I've been a bunch of these dumbasses today. <sighs> Why you ban him? Um, Because I can take a day off and think about it. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, my cam is on. However, uh, you won't be able to see or hear what I have to say at the top of the hour unless you are subscribed for $5 or for free with the Twitch Prime. By connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, you can get one free Prime subscription a month. Or you can get gifted a sub if you're lucky. But not everyone is. Okay, here's the woman at break now. Yet. Time is running out. Tomorrow, the judge is set to decide who can buy the park. Hey, don't put it in my face. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Timo, thank you for the five So I just wanted to thank everybody for being here today. Um, it's gonna, this is going to be uh, the meeting before the final decision. We've been walking around asking if anybody needs a ride. Um, let us know. We're uh, more than willing to give you a ride there and back because we're stronger as, as a group. Harmony means without conflict, in unison, togetherness, peace. I see none of that within their company. Please don't let them take over. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Where will you go if you can't afford to live here? Uh, I mean, I've been homeless before, and I, um, I didn't have a child at the time. Um, and it's just, it's just not fun. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I've been trying not to think about it. I've been trying not to dwell on it. I've been trying to um, do as much as I can and, and just kind of have hope. We're at the court in Fresno, and today a judge is set to rule on who can take ownership of Trails End. Remain seated, come to order. Department 403 is now in session. City of Fresno versus... <laughs> Isn't this America just buy guns and protect your land or some shit? First of all, it's not even their line technically. They're renting it. And secondly, no. What do you mean, dude? That kind of shit is only for fucking wealthy business owners who want to LARP as like... That kind of shit is only for wealthy business owners who want to fucking LARP like they're revolutionaries, okay? That's not for the actual poor. What are you, out of your mind? Broke boys can't fucking defend themselves with guns or whatever. 
That doesn't work that way. The government will come and fucking murder your ass, dude. Are you out of your mind? It was a joke. Holy shit, Lamal. I don't know. Sometimes people I feel like uh, uh, do have a uh, wrong, do have the wrong understanding of like what America is. America is only, America has freedom or at least some level of freedom for the extremely wealthy. There is no freedom for you if you're poor, especially if you're, even if you're like a working class person who's like relatively affluent, you're still, you're still not going to get the same benefits. The richer you get, the more freedoms you have, but it's not for you. This is Jim Kevorkian, case ending 2816 status conference. So, although it was lengthy, rest assured, I did read absolutely everything that was filed with the court. I looked at all of the exhibits. But I did state that the court would consider any legitimate proposals for purchase of the property, but it had to include a viable plan that allowed the receiver to continue at its current pace to abate the nuisances that are the subject of the receivership. So I'm prepared to approve the sale. Okay. Thank you. Oh, there wasn't any legitimate interest. All right. Thank you. In the end, the judge didn't think Caritas had a viable plan and awarded <coughs> the sale to Harmony Communities. As far as we consider it, it's far from over, and we will continue and carry on. So. A community united will never be divided. A community united will never be divided. A community united will never be divided. Sometimes there is collusion. Sometimes the judge is, uh, you know, has a vested interest or whatever and doesn't fucking recuse himself from the case. And then other times they're just operating like judges are supposed to operate, siding with the fucking side of capital. Other times they'll overlook the reality that uh, the actual person who is the guy, in this case the developer or the original owner, didn't actually uh, send over information to the nonprofit on purpose sp so that the nonprofit could come up with a viable uh, a plan to purchase the uh purchase the fucking trailer park you know what i mean and the judge itself in that situation is supposed to go hey that's fucked up you should hand over the plan but they can't because guess what america private property it's his property he can do whatever the fuck he wants with it is unironically the attitude that these people have that is the rule of the law as well the entirety of american understanding the entirety of the american legal system is built around this concept of private ownership So much so that like half of America's resentment towards the federal government comes from it being one of the only entities that can also violate the rule of law in that regard. They find this to be a godly thing, okay? It, it goes beyond like uh, uh, just, you know, regular our regular understanding of, of the laws, okay? They find it to be uh, they find it to be a moral value that needs to be upheld. Private ownership of land, enclosures. It's his property he owes money on and isn't paying, so has a lien, yet he has the power. Yep. It seems like for a lot of people, this is the last stop before homelessness. I can't speak for everybody, but I know for myself, absolutely. The price of an apartment, like a one-bedroom apartment, is like 1200 and bills and childcare, like you can't, you can't live off of that and afford an apartment and you know there's so many things that on top of everything and the rents continue to rise like something has got to give because this isn't benefiting anybody but the people on top we're trying to just tug at strings trying to get the bare minimum and nobody's listening When I see shit like this, I sometimes find myself wanting to act out in very uncounterproductive ways. No, dude, don't fucking be ridiculous. <sighs> so one of the things that there is, one of the alternatives in that situation is a is a 501c3 that actually 
um, uh, that actually wants to purchase the trailer park so they can like salvage the situation and save these people. Uh, another alternative is like tenants unions. This is something that uh, uh, tenants unions that can maybe stop you, maybe prevent you from getting fucking owned by the rule of the law. You know what I mean? But fuck, man, I don't know. In the end, it's just like it's all so awful. It's all so fucking gross and awful. You do have, especially depending on where you live, you do have some rights. Um, and there are lawyers that work pro bono. There's another way. What is this? I mean, we joke about this, right? We joke, we joke, like, people like to joke about this sort of stuff, but this kind of resentment uh, and this kind of reaction only comes uh, after, you know, so much humiliation and so much oppression. This does pop off though. What the fuck? Why is this why does this bang so hard? Pretty good. I doubt that anyone that has even a little bit of wealth wants to say them. I mean, come on, most wealthy people are selfish and shit. Sure, you're right about that. Um, but ultimately, it shouldn't be up to fucking individuals, okay? This is my point. It shouldn't be up to individuals uh, operating in a magnanimous capacity, okay? Individual charity is not the fucking solution to systemic inequalities that are built in a capitalist structure. Do you understand? This is what I try to uh this is what I try to to instill upon you at the very least. If philanthropy was a was was a cure for the illnesses caused by capitalism, then we wouldn't be seeing so many people fucking suffering. And you just watched you just watched uh an example of of a philanthropic organization failing to address the needs of these people because the system prevented them from doing so. You know? If it was better, there would be less need for philanthropy? Yes, if the system worked, there would be no need for philanthropy. By the way, all those people fucking work, and they work significantly harder than the fucking uh, hot dog skinned fat sacks of shit that you watched screeching about fucking uh, a violent revolution because Donald Trump's, uh, you know, Mar-a-Lago home was, was, uh, had some things that the government wanted to seize, Okay. Those those guys don't actually fucking work. They're business owners. They're like the they're like the slumlord. 